So wait till this, and welcome to a video on participles and amps of absolutes. This is primarily meant for revision. Um, you probably shouldn't be learning what a participle is from this video. Um, first of all, we're going to start with what is a participle? A participle is a verb that acts like an adjective, and adjectives are words that describe nouns. Um, so, the ugly man is walking down the street. Ugly, obviously, is an adjective, um, and it describes the word man. The singing man walks down the street. Despite the fact that sing you'd normally consider to be a verb, here it is describing a noun. It is an adjective. The soldiers found a large city, the soldiers found a captured city. And it says both of them describe a city. Um, we're also going to see some nominalized adjectives. Um, nominalized adjectives are where adjectives are pretending to be a noun. Um, so here, the rich own many houses. Rich is obviously an adjective, but we're kind of treating it almost like it's a noun. Um, like it's a nominative plural. The French lost many wars, same way. Um, we're treating it like it is a noun. They're describing a non-existent noun, like people. And finally, note up here, um, adjectives agree with, i.e. have the same noun as, uh, have the same case number and gender as their noun. This is the full chart. We're going to come to all of these. Um, only thing to really note at the moment, I suppose, is there is no present passive, there is no future passive. That's not a only in GCC, that's a genuinely they don't exist. Um, so we're going to talk about present passive, uh, <laughs> no we're not, we're going to talk about present active participles, perfect passive participles, future active participles, and the weird ones in the middle here, which we'll get to. So the first one of these um, is the present participle. It is present in the sense that it happens at the same time as the verb. Um, so these present participles you get by adding ns, as here, portans, or nt with some endings, as here, portantis, to the stem. Um, the endings come from ingens, which is a third declension adjective, which looks very similar to rex and caput, with the exception of the ablative singular, where it stays as an I, as opposed to going to the E that you'd expect. Um, that's very common for third declension adjectives. The working slave, laborans, obviously it looks like this NS here, labor as I work, so the working slave walks to the house. Um, the boy heard the shouting women. Notice here that heard is actually perfect tense. But because our, so our present participle is describing the women, so it's happening at the same time. So as he heard them, they were shouting. This point will become more obvious as we go. Here are some sentences. I'm going to go through them, but if you want to test yourself, you can pause here, try and work them out, and then I'll explain. In three, two, one. So the girls gave food to the petenti canny. Uh, they obviously describe each other. Peto is I beg, so, or look for or make for, the girls gave food to the begging dog. The senator saw the turban, clamanti um. Now this is an interesting example here because clamanti um is clearly genitive plural. It doesn't describe turban. Just because they have an M at the end doesn't mean they do. Um, there's nothing to describe clamantium, it is a nominalized adjective. So it's the senator saw the crowd of shouting brackets men. The soldiers are killed in a... Uh, sorry, the soldiers are killed. Okay, where are they killed? The soldiers pugnantes in a diro proilio, fighting in a dreadful battle. Uh, we could rewrite this, by the way. We could say the soldiers who are fighting in a dreadful battle are being killed. We can rewrite this present participle and it will still make sense. Here, all I've done is change necanto to necabanto, so present to imperfect. The soldiers fighting in a dreadful battle were being killed. So this bit hasn't really changed. This bit in uh, our subclause of our participle hasn't really changed. But if we rephrase it, we might have to think about that. Because we can't say the soldiers who are be in fighting in a dreadful battle were being killed. Because that's now not happening at the same time. So we actually have to change this tense. So be careful if it is not in the right tense. Present participles can often be left in the sort of just as an ing word as opposed to rewriting it. Next one down, perfect passive participles. Very, very common, extremely common, just like present participles, they will turn up in the GCC. Um, these happen before the verb and, as is in the name, they are passive. Um, 
They're quite simple. They are formed from the fourth principal part of the verb. So in your dictionary, you'll get four bits. So porto, portare, portavi. So I carry, to carry, I carried. And then portatus, having been carried. That's all they are. They have endings of a two-on-two adjective, i.e. bonus. And that's nice and simple, because servus, puella, bellum, fine. Um, and we can see some examples here. The having been punished slave is working diligently. The girl sends a letter. And what kind of letter is it? It's having been written. A lot of the time you can take out the having been and you can just, just say the punished slave or the written letter. But it's useful to remember personally thinking having been heard or having been written. Once again, I'm going to go through these. So pause if you want to try and work them out for yourselves. In three, two, one. The captives flee from the having been burned city. Or well, the prisoners, apparently, what I wrote. And I've noticed here, I've not really bothered with the having been burnt, I've just put burnt. Here we've got the pueri locunta de auditis. Notice that doesn't describe each other. Oh, there you go. Um, the boys talk about the having been heard things. Notice for both these, I've given you options where you might improve the English. Because the heard things and the burnt city is okay, but we might want to phrase it in a way that sounds a little bit better in English. A senator, having been wounded by his ally most gravely, soon falls. So, mock soon, kate it falls. Um, so again, this vulneratus describes the senator. To rephrase that slightly better into English, a senator who was wounded most gravely by his enemy soon falls. Um, notice if we change cadit from present to perfect, falls to fell, we are going to have to change this bit in the subclause if we choose to do it this way. So if you choose to use a subclause as opposed to just saying the burnt, the herd, wounded, um, you will need to think about what tense that last bit of the verb is. Um, if in doubt, just stick to burnt, or as opposed to who, which was burnt, for example, in our first one. Future participle. Um, a bit rarer, but you will see them. Um, these happen, as is, as is suggested in the name, after the verb. Um, they're formed in basically the same kind of way as these. We're looking for a fourth principal part, but what we're doing is we're adding ur in there. So porto goes to portaturus, um, moneo, moniturus, etc. Um, same endings as the perfect passive participle. Um, so they all look pretty much identical except for this ur. But of course they don't translate like that. They translate as something that's about to happen. So the about to laugh, resurus, dominus, orders the slave. The boy catches sight of the about to sail ship. As you can imagine, we might have to change that about to sail. Once again, I'm going to go through these. Um, pause here if you want to have a go for yourself. Three, two, one. The leader sends soldiers. What kind of soldiers? The moritoros soldiers. Notice this is both. These are both accusative masculine plural. The leader sends the about to die soldiers against Rome, or the leader sends soldiers who are about to die against Rome. Future participles are quite hard to leave like this. You will normally rewrite them. The about to buy things. We pause here. I've given you the translation, but you can see. But what would that describe? There's nothing in here that could possibly be in the same case. This is a nominalized adjective. The about to buy women, uh, <laughs> the women about to buy rather, and arrive at tavern. I'm at the shop. What are the women about to buy? They're about to buy many gifts for their friend, or well, the women who will buy many gifts. How do we know it's women? Because it's feminine. Um, the friends. Well, this one's a bit simpler, but notice this askensuri does not describe Montem. That would be a silly error to make. Instead, it's the friends about to climb. Huh, I've not underlined that one. Good. Um, the mountain are carrying a lot of food. The friends who are, will climb, who are going to climb the mountain will buy a lot of food. Um, here, again, same thing. I've just changed the tense. The friends who were going to climb the mountain. Again, you've got to always go back to this, what does future participle mean? It means it's going to happen after the verb, 
fine. And this is perhaps another way of making that a bit easier to think about. Uh, and the, so to speak, antecedent participle, or uh, what would normally be considered a perfect participle, happens before the verb. A concurrent participle happens at the same time, and a future participle or a subsequent participle happens afterwards. Um, these are just my terms, sadly. Um, it would more, be much more helpful, rather than calling it perfect, present, and future, if we called it something else that made it m much clearer that the action is about the relationship in time to the verb, which is my action line going across here, as opposed to actually meaning present. It doesn't mean happening now. It means it happens at the same time as the action. Or, for the perfect participle, it happens before, and for the future participle, it happens afterwards. Finally, last type, the perfect active participle looks absolutely identical to the perfect passive participle, but it is only the case for a deponent verb. Deponent verbs are verbs which look active, no, no, that's entirely the wrong way around, <laughs> look passive but act active. Uh, Semi-deponent verbs are slightly weird um, in that they look not, they look normal for the present, imperfect and future tenses, but as soon as you get to any of the perfect tenses, they look pa passive but still act active. This is quite unhelpful. We're going to give you some examples. Um, so, hortor, I encourage, even though it looks like it's I am encouraged. Gaudeo is I rejoice, and it looks like it should be I rejoice. Uh, when you get to the, the passive version, the, the perfect versions here, hortata sum, I, uh, as one phrase, hortata sum would be I encouraged. Gawisa sum would be I rejoiced. By itself, having encouraged, having rejoiced. So, the having rejoiced slave is punished by his master, Mistress, even. the about to s the having spoken messenger is eating dinner. <sighs> this is all of the GCSE deponents and semi deponents, all of them. You can see the <clears throat> excuse me the conjugation of the verb, a lot of third, um, and a few first and second, um, and some of them are semi deponent and some of them are just straight up deponent. Learn this. So, here are some examples. Um, again, pause if you want to have a go for yourself. Three, two, one. The slave girls are very sad. That's the main sentence, nice and simple. Why are the slave girls sad? They are having tried in vain to leave. Wow, that sentence was darker than I was expecting. Um, the guards, what are the guards doing? They see the ingressos. Please notice. Ingressos could theoretically describe guards, but not if you're making guards nominative. They could theoretically both be accused of plural. Probably they're not. The guards catch sight of the having entered brackets men, i.e. the masculine plural things. So, so men. Um, how could we rewrite that sentence? The guards catch sight of the men who entered. This sentence really doesn't need to be rewritten, does it? The slave girls haven't tried to leave are very sad. That makes perfect sense. The guards catch sight of the having entered men, maybe that should be rewritten. Here, the milites necant nautas. That's your main sentence, nice and easy. Um, nautas is a slightly mean thing in that it looks like it should be feminine, but sailors in masculine sailors in Latin are masculine, even though they look feminine. So Wisos describes nautas. The sa the soldiers kill the sailors, having seemed to be enemies or who seem to be enemies. And again, what we've done here, change the tense, you can imagine what might happen to this thing here. The sailors killed the, so the soldiers killed the sailors, having seemed to be enemies, the same as before. If we change the tense, who had seemed to be enemies, because it needs to happen before the verb. It is a perfect active participle, so the action has to happen before the verb. So again, there's our full table. Present participles, perfect passive participles, future participles, and the weird ones, perfect active participles that only happen for deponent verbs. Notice that these three 
all have um, us are um endings, i.e. two, one, two, like bonus, whereas present participles look like rex and caput, i.e. third declension. Then we get to abs of absolutes. These are an extremely form, uh, extremely common form of a subclause in Latin. Um, they are ablative because they are formed from a noun and a participle in the ablative case. Um, and they are absolute because of this meaning of absolute. Um, it comes from, they are completely separated from the rest of the sentence, and in terms of grammar, um, therefore they are, they are loosed from the rest of the sentence. Um, this is the absolute business. Um, an easy way to think of them is with x, dot, 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 comma, rest of sentence. So, with the enemy approaching, the citizens flee from the city. With the gates destroyed, the citizens flee from the city. With the soldiers about to die, the citizens flee from the city. Notice we've got present participles, perfect passive participles, future participles. This one, we could have perfect active participles, I just haven't given an example. Here are some more examples. Again, if you want to have a go for yourself, pause now. Three, two, one. Okay, so we're always going to be thinking this is going to be ablative. It could theoretically not be, but we're going to pretend that we all know it's ablative. Um, so it's with x dot 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 y. So with the letter written, the old man reads from his book. How might we improve this? What could be a better translation of the sentence? Because that's a bit clunky. As the letter had been written, the old man is reading his book. The boys quickly left. Okay, well, what's going on here? We've got Werbis and Auditis look like they could be agreeing. They look like they could both be ablative plural. Nte clearly isn't. So, the boys, with the words of the messenger heard, quickly leave. How could we improve this bit in the middle? Well, after the words of the messenger, that would work, or as the words would work. We could have had after in back here. Um, here, this is actually quite a long little bit of the subclause, isn't it? You know, that's nearly as long as the main sentence. Um, Inamico and Gerente could both be the same case. They could both be ablative singular. Also, an extremely short note. You may remember that a little while ago I told you that third declension, abli third declension ablative singular endings tend to go I for adjectives, except for, and this is a particularly bizarre rule, they go E for ablative absolutes. Don't worry about it, you don't need to know about that particularly. So, moving on. Cool. With his rival waging war in Germany, the centre called his friends to him. How could we rephrase that? Whilst his rival was waging war in Germany. That'd be a nice rephrase. Again, this is the sub clause here is now actually quite a lot longer than the main sentence. Um, the castodes, they louder banter. Okay, well, what's this bit in the middle? We got captivis and conatis, as are obviously our active noun and active participle, and this is kind of describing what they've tried. The guards, with the captives having tried in vain to escape, were being praised, or because the captives had tried in vain to escape, were being praised. Notice here we've had now, um, this is a perfect active participle, present participle, perfect passive participle, another perfect passive participle. I haven't put a future participle in this one in, but you could have. Finally, he's we cease. With these brackets, things seen. The leader ordered Suos, his men, to attack. Interestingly enough, He's, we cease is kind of nominalized in that there's no real, excuse me, there's no real noun that they describe, but so is suos. His mas the leader ordered his masculine plural things, so men. When these things have been seen, the leader ordered his men to attack. And finally, sum esse fui is I am to be I was. Um, there is a future participle version of that word. Um, with his father about to be in the house, the son is working diligently, or as he was about to be in the house, or as his father was, a, uh, as his father, yeah, actually is about to be in the house, kind of. Um, however, like, you'd really think that sometimes you might want a present participle, um, it doesn't really exist in Latin, and so they'll just skip it which is really unhelpful. As you can see down here, 
Caesare Duque are both ablative. You'd really expect with Caesar being leader, but you've not actually got a present participle version of this word because it doesn't exist in Latin. Um, you can have being absent or being present, but you can't have just being. So sometimes you'll just see two ablative nouns without a verb in its own little subclause, and it's really confusing, and you just kind of have to think, with Caesar leader. Okay, with Caesar as leader, fine. And that is genuinely all it is on participles and nouns of absolutes. The world's quite complicated. Do your best to spot them. You should be able to learn to recognize the forms of participles and then work it out logically from there. Hope that helps. Thank you very much.